What's up, Prime Fam? What's going on, guys? So if you're new to the channel, my name is Brendan Teets, and these are my workout vlogs where I take you through my power building style workouts. Now, we're in season two of the power building series. This is episode three, and this is Thursday. This day is basically our bench and hypertrophy focus day. So I'll explain what that means in a bit, but essentially we have a ton of bench volume along with body parts we kind of want to focus on from a hypertrophy standpoint. And we also focus on a lot of mobility, warming up, and recovery on this day because we don't have a lot of time consuming big lifts and it's kind of a day for us to move around get a pump and feel good so started off with some overhead stretching of the lats and the shoulders so we as power lifters we get a ton of shoulder extension retraction in the scapula this kind of gets us in that upward rotation elevation of the scapula and shoulder flexion so really loosens up the lats you can see there i was cramping up so i had to come back and redo these in a sec but Kristen's kind of demoing this first exercise I want to take you through. This is actually the improper way of doing it. You see our butt looks all stuck out and super big there. Don't do it like that. When you do these, you want to look like you have no butt. Your back should be very neutral, if anything, biasing a little bit of flexion. And you try to pull all of the stretch from the shoulders kind of going uh, into full flexion as well as elevation. Um, after that, we loosened up some more with these band pole parts, but we do them a little different than everyone. We really focus on shoulder external rotation and stretching into position, and then we get some active movement after we've kind of loosened up the position. So just a few things that kind of get our shoulders loose before a bench press. These by no means are, are needed to you know keep you super healthy or, or prevent injury. It's just for us to kind of move around, feel good, and uh, kind of prepare the body to get in these end range positions. Now, I'm starting my day with some machine lever bench press. Uh, I got those rogue uh, trolley handles, which are really useful for the home gym. This is my third day of benching in the week, and so instead of doing a barbell bench because I'm in the off season and I'm focused more on hypertrophy, I opted for my lever bench on this day, which really actually targets my mid to lower pec, even though you would think from the incline uh, position of the bench that this would be more upper pec, but you can see I'm actually arching into this and really squeezing that mid kind of lower pec. So that exercise for me is more hypertrophy focus. I don't know if it's going to have a ton of carryover to my bench, but I still get in a, a low specificity bench variant while uh, building my pecs, which in the long run, more muscle mass on my pecs will definitely help with uh, more potential neurological adaptation. Now, Kristen, she actually has some heavy bench on this day, but albeit with a tempo. So she warms up and, and builds up to a top single with a tempo. Today, she had a single at RP6. And then after that, uh, she had some back down volume work, which I'll show in a second. Now these trolley arms, if anyone gets these, colors do not fit on them and it's very frustrating. So a clever way of, of clamping your plates down is to use your wrist wraps and to tighten them really tight. Um, this was my last working set here and you'll notice the slight grip position change. I'm still learning these handles in this machine and I actually feel better with a slightly neutral grip on these. You can actually see there's way more pec contraction here. I'm able to really squeeze the pec fibers together and this tends to align a little bit better with how my clavicles and humerus are all set up so this felt really really good and this was week one of course so I'm still introing volume I'm not pushing it too hard on those and really kind of taking it easy now Kristen after this she had um, or after a top tempo single she has just regular high volume comp bench so the cool thing about that top tempo single is it works on form obviously from the tempo with some heavy weights because it is a single but it's nowhere near failure and so it really treats as a primer set for these volume sets of eight that she has after. So it kind of allows her to make those volume sets feel a little bit easier and she probably gets a little bit heavier of weight on there because it warms up her, or, or for lack of a better term, kind of turns on her central nervous system, gets everything feeling really light on the lighter volume work. After my bench work, I go into some lever overhead press. I'm really focused on full range of motion here and getting the most out of this from a hypertrophy standpoint. Not too worried about going heavy. I have a ton of reps on these, so really focused on building and just annihilating my delts with a ton of total workload. And you can see from my face, week one, it was really weird getting back into all this you know, bodybuilding and hypertrophy work. I'm really just um, still acclimating to all the workload, but it feels good. I'm getting huge pumps. Now after that, we really focus on some arms. So me and Kristen both kind of want to bring up our arms a little bit. So we have a ton of arm volume on this day. Um, you know, contrary to, to popular belief, some women really do like training their arms. And so Kristen, she wants to really bring up hers. Uh, my arms are always a weak point from these angles. It may look like I have super huge arms, but my triceps super smash against my side, so it looks way bigger than it is. I've always had really big delts and traps in a um, kind of mid upper back. 
but very uh, lagging arms and pecs. So that's gonna be kind of a theme this, this training cycle. And it's something I'm really trying to fix as um, the cycles go on. Cause I'd really like to build uh, specifically my triceps because they're they they attach really poorly on my uh, body my anatomical structure for my triceps is really bad you'll see uh, they attach really high up on uh, above the elbow and it just doesn't give me that sweep that some guys have so the only way to fix that is to really just try to build my triceps as big as possible here I'm doing some overhead tricep work which really gets the long head or the the biggest head of the triceps by putting it in a full stretch position and I really like the football bar for getting into um, or getting the best contraction out of the overhead work I don't like dumbbells with that and I don't like a straight barbell now Kristen here she's also uh, doing some arms she's starting with some cable curls um, this is mainly to get more of a full uh, tension throughout the entire range of motion so the thing about a barbell cur uh, barbell curl is the the tension peaks and valleys at very specific times during the range of motion. This is what we call a resistance curve. The uh, cable curl is gonna have a much more constant resistance curve. This isn't necessarily better, but in some circumstances, it can actually benefit you. So in her case, we're thinking joint friendly and more total tension throughout the entire range of motion to train all the biceps. A barbell curl, on the other hand, is gonna peak about halfway up and then near sh uh, full shoulder flexion, um, when, you, when or excuse me, full elbow flexion, the weight's gonna get a little bit lighter. So I like that more for strength and kind of overload. And so you gotta pick and choose your exercises, even as a bodybuilder, knowing you know what is gonna cause what type of adaptation. So those barbell curls, I think, are really good for actually keeping your elbows healthy and getting some strength work on the biceps to balance out all the tricep work we do, you know, all the pressing. Did some flexing after, uh, or right before my last set of curls. Really wanted to kind of show off the gains. Guys, I'm already leaning out, which I'm so excited about. I've started a cut at the beginning of this, this block and only a few days into it, um, well, really, I started my cut, you know, a couple days before I started the training block, but only a few days in and I'm already, you know, feeling fuller and looking a little bit leaner. So I'm really excited about that. Uh, finishing up my last set of barbell curls here. Um, not going to lie, I used the kilo plates so you could see my arms more. The bumper plates kind of block my arms. And although some people want to clout from, you know, curling really heavy looking weights because the bumpers look bigger, <laughs> I'm the opposite. I want to show off my body. So I use these kilos, which it's really funny watching someone uh, be so comp specific with their curls. So finished up those biceps. Then I went on to some cable curls here. Uh, again, here I'm thinking about, okay, what do I want to do in my secondary bicep movement? For me, I want to get some more more uh, kind of thorough tension throughout the entire range of motion. So I opted for these cable curls here, um, going a lot closer to failure and higher repetition ranges. The barbell curls I did a little bit heavier. And then after that, I got these uh, tricep pushdowns. Um, you'll notice I'm doing a ton of tricep work throughout the entire training week. Um, everything is very close to failure, you know, RP eight or higher, and I'm getting a ton of sets in and really just focusing on full extension, you know, getting the form all the way to the top and all the way extended throughout the entire range of motion. Now, Kristen, she opted for uh, an incline curl here. So this is gonna do the kind of same thing that we were talking about with the long head of the triceps, but for the biceps. So um, we're gonna stretch the bicep head here through shoulder extension, and it's gonna change which bicep head kind of takes tension. And then it also really helps um, actually fix a lot of the issues low bar squatters deal with. I got this idea from Jordan Shallow. I, I don't have time to explain um, how it helps with elbow tendonitis and some other issues we see with bicep tendinopathy as well. But it's a really good exercise if done correctly um, to kind of balance out the bicep heads and the bicep shoulder complex. Um, after that, she just had some tricep pushdowns, um, also pushing it to failure there and really uh, kind of killing out her arms. Now, after all the arm work, Kristen's main focus, and we'll go more in depth uh, in her own video. So if you don't know, I post her own separate videos on the channel as well. So always go take a look at those for more in depth uh, explanations. But we had her doing these um, heel elevated uh, barbell front squat. So really, really light, super high rep. And notice how her feet are elevated on top of the rack and she's wearing her very large squat heel. So it's a 0.75 inch heel. And then the rack elevates it at least another inch and a half. 
So she's getting about, you know, you know, anywhere from two to two and a quarter inch uh, elevation of her heels. And she's doing these front squats to really focus on the quads and glutes. Contrary to what a lot of people are going to believe, the front squat can actually target your glutes very well. This happens, or, or this has to do with um, everyone's individual anatomy. Some people are going to feel front squats in their upper back. Some are going to feel more in their quads, some in their glutes. But when you do it with this heel elevation, it makes it so lower body dominant that even people who tend to feel it in their upper backs will feel it a lot more in their legs. And the trick is to stand very close together with your feet. Now, after that I did some grip work here so a weak point for me from a strength standpoint is my grip so I did these axle bar holds um, with some pretty lightweight and I was really just focused on work capacity here in the forearm so I did uh, I think a minute long hold or slightly longer really just going to complete failure and then as you can see here the pain in my hands and face for after doing that um, the the goal there is to build a lot of capacity in my grip so my grip strength has always been something that's kind of bothered me nothing major but here and there I'll miss a rep because of grip strength so I'm really trying to make sure that doesn't become a larger weak point by just throwing in some grip training plus I'm sure it's gonna make my forearms big so that's always a, a cool plus now after uh, all those front squats she had multiple sets of those um, with her heels elevated and the feet very close together she then goes into this very quad dominant movement as well so the idea here with these sissy squats is to just grow her legs like crazy so again this is kind of our weak point hypertrophy day or what I call a hypertrophy focus day where we focus in on the body parts we want to bring up the most and now after all that, that arm work, the forearm work, the quad work that Kristen was doing, we then get onto some core. And this is something I almost plug on this Thursday session on most of my clients training. So I think training your core is extremely important. And these um, single arm farmer's carries are really good at um, getting your obliques and your core to centrate the torso through instability. So remember when we squat guys, the core is more of an anti-flexor an anti-rotator than it is a flexor or or rotator. So I think people think the obliques are are mainly meant for you know twisting your torso. And while that's true, that's what they do in function. When we're thinking about carryover to our squats and deads, we want to think anti-movement because what does our core do? It stabilizes us. It tries to hold us in place. So we want to do a lot of movement movements that kind of mimic this. So these one arm uh, farmer's carries really get our obliques, our TVA, um, and and all the entire core to center our torso kind of hold it into a middle spot and if you do these correctly you should try to stand as upright and squeeze your abs and obliques on as hard as you can to basically hold yourself into place so Chris and I both did these she's showing me up because I did 70 pounds and she's doing 50 pounds but the difference is I'm 215 pounds of muscle and she's about you know 54 kilos uh, or 120 ish pounds give or take a little bit more than that now actually from the weight gain but she's a lot smaller than me so the fact that she's able Able to uh, do these farmers carry so heavy just kind of shows you uh, why she's always a little bit more healthy than I am because she honestly stays up on her core work and all the uh, the things that people get lazy on that I think really keep power lifters healthy and moving better so she's kind of a beast at these but she's finishing up with them now again the idea here is anti-movement so when you do these don't think you need to walk fast don't try to like trip over your feet and and you know move as quick as you can we do 60 total steps so um, down one way is 30 steps and then down the other way is another 30 steps and the whole time we're trying to really put our torso in its most upright centered position and not try to move you know left or right too much so we kind of take our time with that now after that I get some hip flexion work um, which is a core exercise but it's also a hip flexor exercise which the core is part of the hip flexor complex but um, the, the thing here I'm trying to do is basically the opposite of what we do when we squat the squat is a major knee and hip extensor movement. This is gonna be a hip flexion dominant movement. So it, it kind of, again, gets us in the opposite opposing range of motion, works the low abs, the TBA really well, and then I finish up with some planks. So again, uh, anti-movements rather than a full uh, range of motion movement. So you need both. For hypertrophy, you wanna do some flexion-based ab drills, and then for strength, we wanna do a lot of isometric work. So that's the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up, give it a comment below if you have any questions about this it really helps out the channel when you guys comment um, and let me know what you guys want to see in future videos do you like when I do the voiceovers more or do you like the in-person training I'm gonna do both but I like to kind of know what you guys like so let me know down in the comment section and until next time I'll see you guys later